I think we could honestly do an entire episode of just sexual innuendos. Yes. Because you just said I was holding it in my mouth. And I, <laughs> I didn't even hear it. I <laughs> immediately thought of so many wonderful, naughty things. But this episode is not that. So if you're tuning in for the very, very first time, you're lucky. Well, maybe maybe you wanted this episode to be nothing but sexual innuendos. It's not nothing but, but there's a lot. There's a few. At the beginning. And the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we also joke about buying us microphones, and it's not really a joke. Donate some money to the podcast. The easiest way to do it as is at the website, energyislovepodcast.com. If you go there right now immediately and scroll to the bottom, you will see a tiny little donate button. And it's easy and convenient and can be done via PayPal, where you can give us $400 once, or you can give us $100 a month for 400 months. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say $100 or $1? You said $100 a month for 400 months. You if could, you want to do that too, I mean, cool. <laughs> you could do that or you could just give us a dollar a month for 400 months. Anyways, you get the idea. Donating to the podcast is easy and we'll take all of that money and put it right back into the show. Yes. Thank you for listening, folks. On today's episode, we talk about retrograde is it a factor or is it an excuse a fictional excuse oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh and just so you know this episode has a bunch of technical fuck-ups that are um retrograde that are evident that that oftentimes are blamed on retrograde so we i fuck see i can't even finish sentences thanks retrograde so, <laughs> spoiler alert it's a fact <laughs> it's a fact and we also yeah. get into uncomfortableness of me expressing my things that make me uncomfortable. And I don't like talking about them even now as we do this little intro to the episode. So, they, yeah, it's a great fucking show. It is a great fucking show. Tune in <laughs> and enjoy. Turn it up and relax. Because here we go with another episode of the Energies Love Podcast with Stefan Craig. Here we go. You are listening to the Energy is Love podcast. The energy is love. The energy is the love podcast. The energy is love podcast. Energy is love. The energy is love podcast. The podcast for the universe. The energy is love podcast. Uh, damn it! What was I gonna say? I was gonna say something to you. Oh, turn your mic a little bit. I want to think about like. So we have a 90 degree. just like yours. We have a 90 degree and then we have a 45. Maybe it does look just like it mine. It does look just like yours. You want to turn your mic a little bit and show me how you want me to turn my <laughs> mic that's identically matching your position? <laughs> oh, one of these days. Christmas is coming. We and already bought Christmas. I know. I know. We. What do you mean we already bought? Not for you and me. That's for the people out there. Oh, if they want to get us a Christmas yeah. present. We need microphones. We do. That are super high-end good microphones. I already know what they are. I already have them picked out. They're already in my Amazon cart. Should you do a GoFundMe? For microphones? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they can be for anything. Uh, there was a GoFundMe I that I saw. about putting a Brazilian on there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, she's not like talking about a houseboy uh, Brazilian that's going to come and do yard work for us. No, no, no. <laughs> she referenced her <clears throat> nether regions. It's talking about a, it, it's called, I think it's waxing. What is can a Brazilian? Wa can it's, you say wax? <laughs> can you say? It's it's where you get on a table and a stranger pours burning hot wax on your vagina everywhere, and then they rip it off, so you have a little bit of hair right down the middle. Oh, so you have to have the strip? I think so. It might be. Strip. I don't know. I have never went to anybody else for my waxing needs. I figured I can contortion myself if that's. Could you imagine? I can't even imagine that. Can't even imagine what waxing down there. Yes, I can imagine no, that I having mean, somebody else do it. Yeah, like that would seem like such a shitty job slash uncomfortable position to put yourself in. I just can't even imagine it. By the way, folks, you can hear Pe the coffee in the background. People specialize as proctologists, so I think that. Yeah, but that's a doctor. That's it's not still a, sticking his finger in somebody's ass all day. Yeah, but that's a doctor. That's not a minimum wage job at the local waxing salon. It's You get to charge whatever you want. Mm. Whether or not people come for what you charge, I don't know. But that's what she said. Oh, no, not about <laughs> that. That's bad. <laughs> um, 
I had a thought. What? Oh, buy us microphones, folks, for Christmas. I really don't want to wax, so you can take that off your list. Yeah. I take care of that myself. Thank you. Buy us microphones so then we don't have to... Literally every time we record, we don't have to have a conversation about the positioning of our microphones. But then, sweetheart, what would we talk about to get the conversation rolling? It is our opener. Then we get to talk about the new <laughs> microphones and how amazing they are. That was pretty obvious. I don't know how I didn't. You're right. We're, we're fine. Go ahead. Get us microphones. Yeah. <clears throat> I had something else that I was going to immediately tell you when you we sure? started recording. I don't remember what it was. Though. This is two for two. You should have wrote it down. Yeah. I should have. I'll wait. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Oh, the GoFundMe that you mentioned. Oh, yeah? Did you see there was a GoFundMe? So out here where we live in this small little community, um, probably like every other freaking place in the world, it has a community Facebook page. Uh, It actually has like thousands of community (laughs) Facebook pages because everybody just decides they want to start one for yard sales or classifieds or yard work or uh, gossip gossip or whatever but there's a big one that is for the entire county somebody just randomly threw up a post and it was a gofundme page that they started um for their get this so what it is is from the looks of it their boyfriend who (laughs) got his ass beat in some gas station in salt lake and then had to go to the hospital and the police impounded the vehicle. So the GoFundMe is for getting the vehicle out of impound. But it's like $2,000 that they're asking for their GoFundMe. This isn't funny. I don't know why. I, like, it's funny because you can tell by looking at it that it's uh, crackheads. Like, you can just tell it's a crackhead, even though, like, I'm definitely judging and I apologize and if you listen to this podcast and you are not that, I, I apologize. But you can totally tell that it's a crackhead. My first thought was, is it a, is it a state tax? Because that'll tell you everything you need right there. Yeah, it totally was. <laughs> then no. Because it's like, who? you don't have a $2,000 impound fee. Depends do you know on what I mean? How, you can do that. It depends on how it's there. The <clears throat> impounds will... Do whatever they want, yeah. right? The impound yards will do whatever they mm-hmm. want. But it's totally like crackhead was drunk. Got into a fight with somebody else. Oh my God. And their car got taken. And Aww. they started a GoFundMe for Poor it. Poor girl. She should get a new boyfriend. <laughs> she should get a new boyfriend. <laughs> One that's not a crackhead. Yeah, that would help. That yeah. would help. It's okay. You are worth it, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our coffee's done brewing, so you don't have to listen to our coffee pot in the background anymore. You just have to listen to me drinking it. And now you just have to listen to whoever's blowing leaves. Pause for the leaf blower. <laughs> your, mama, your mama was a leaf blower. <laughs> we won't be starting a GoFundMe uh, <clears throat> for microphones for the podcast. I think I would rather support somebody's microphone needs instead of getting their car out of impound. Depends on the reason. <laughs> like there are reasons. Being drunk and getting in a fight is not a reason. There's some reasons I won't say because I don't want to sound like I'm supporting any acts of violence, but there's some things that like, oh, I can see how that'll happen. Yeah. I'll, I'll donate to that. <laughs> it's all right. You, everybody gets that, that, that understanding. Uh, so, you know, that's what I mean, but. You're cute. So baby, brand yes. new episode after last week. And I, I didn't shame you. I don't think I shamed you by any means, but. Oh shit. <laughs> Um, I encouraged you to write down ideas that you had for oh, yeah. the podcast mm-hmm. as your week, per, as, as the weeks went on the days of our lives. Um, did, and you have some, right? I have two. You have two. I have two. Which one do you want to start with? I don't know. The first one is. I don't know. I think that one has to kind of like work into the conversation as to where the second one, I feel like we can just kind of make it a conversation instead of being like, wow, that came out of left field. Let's hear it. Retrograde. Retrograde. We're in retrograde. Do you want to hear it or not? (laughs) Yeah, I do. Okay. So what I wrote about retrograde from my personal experience Mm -hmm. is that, or your personal experience this is this is not about anybody in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing it out there. It's my public service here. Um, 
Oh, Stevie still texted me. Sorry. I got distracted. I got words. Words. I received a picture. She's, she's made me a present. She's made me a present mm-hmm. and she's sending me a picture. So if I do not respond immediately, she's going to think that I do not love it. So I have to check it right now. That's pretty Is neat. it from her horticulture it class? It is. Oh, I love it. <coughs> that guy looks really annoyed. And who's this weird adult male in your class that looks like he hates his life? That's not the teacher. On topic, babe. Sorry. Retrograde. Hold on. Well, I have to respond real fast. Okay. For those of you that don't know what retrograde is, um, it's an imaginary thing that people... It's an imaginary <laughs> thing. I was going to describe it as a dry ass book. So you I go ahead like, <laughs> go ahead, edit that. Every so often, uh, the planet Mercury appears to be spinning backwards. Appears, yes. And it has to do in relation to the location of us and the other planet. It's so a big thing in regards to stuff but it doesn't really spin backwards it just appears to spin backwards mm-hmm. but the thought and idea behind it is that it jacks up energy and it, it does. does it does jack i i totally agree thank you yeah so, so it's not fictional it doesn't really go backwards but holy who yeah so this is where we're at and you know I don't know, because you can look at it and say it's the energy you put behind things. If you believe in something, then that's what it is. If you believe that you're going to be jacked up during retrograde, you're setting yourself up for that. However, how do you explain the fact that when things have been going crazy before you even learn about retrograde and then you learn about retrograde as things are like, "Ah, what's happening? And then you're like, oh, my gosh, what they're saying happens is exactly what's happening before I even knew about retrograde, before I knew how to implant this thought in my head, I was experiencing it. So then... Is it, is it yourself? Is it your thoughts manifestation or is it really happening? It's really happening. We'll just go with that. I know you well <laughs> enough to know that you were just like, I know what you just did there. No. I know what you were thinking. You're even giving me crazy eyes right Not now. Not at all. You are. You're like, oh, fuck. I want to hear what you, I want to hear what you wrote down about it. Your husband will be a jerk during retrograde <laughs> and it's okay. You'll love him after. <laughs> You'll love him afterwards. <laughs> um. I said about um, retrograde fears resurfacing about something that I've slash you've you have you have finally embraced um, making you question things again. So um, like if you feel like like this has been something that you've been put off the fears have stopped so many times before but now you're like in the space and you're you've jumped through that hoop and you are sure you're certain you've um You've let the fears go and you are there. You, you know, do you know what I'm saying? I'm I know what nervous. you're saying. Okay. No, the past comes back. The past comes back. Yeah, Thank you. Well, you can a, summarize it, but that's a short podcast. It's the uh, Christmas story. It's the Christmas. You're, you're going to be visited by three ghosts Shut during up. retrograde. <laughs> Shut up. They're all assholes. <laughs> they're all from your past uh, and they're coming to show you uh, how you need to change. How you need to, no. Oh, no, that's there's a point. Yes, there is how you need to change. But my what I said was when you've made peace with things mm. and you are embracing something, and then all of a sudden those fears that you have, those obstacles that you have overcome when they come back up and they're loud again. I said, uh, just feel it. Don't decide or make changes. Basically, don't fucking panic. Don't fucking panic. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. So I'm not saying like you say how you need to change, and I'm like, don't make any change. Just hold. Just hold for a minute. Let it surface. Let the fears come up. Let you like process whatever you need to, whatever extra little bits are still buried that you need to go through again. Don't try and barrel through them and don't let them rule everything. Just like, just see them. Just watch. Just watch. Be a watcher. Be a watcher. Voyeurism of your fears. Voyeurism of your fears. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, I have so many thoughts that were flooding to my head right then retrograde seems to like how much stock do you put in because mercury is like the most famous of the retrogrades Mm -hmm. but all the other planets at some time or Mm -hmm. at some point and they also use the terminology retrograde in regards to some other things too like Mm -hmm. in the in the realm of spirituality and energy and all this other kind of stuff how much stock do you put into all of it like so if suddenly are you gonna make fun of me i'm not gonna make fun of you at all baby i'm curious uh, so like with, when Pluto goes retrograde and it means something different or... I put stock into all of them. I pay attention. And when we have like six planets in retrograde, 
I don't want to leave the house. Okay. So that leads me to my next question. You're going to totally make fun of me. I'm not going to make fun yes, of I you Yes, I think at all. I'm a mermaid. No, no, no. Because, uh, you know, I believe everything along with you, but I also like totally. to look at it and I like to think about it and I like to challenge it. And you I, believe everything's energy. I know. The title of your podcast, <laughs> Energy is Love. Everything's about energy. So please go ahead. Yeah. Let, let's hear you be the devil's advocate. I'm not being the devil's advocate too much. So, um, oh my God. My I love how I can make your brain. Brain is not functioning. It's because it's retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> First off, I was going to say, uh, folks, this month, not because retrograde lasts a determined amount of time, right? Usually it's a few weeks. Yeah, we're almost done. Yeah, we're almost it's, done. It's going to end at the end of November. And um, uh, at the beginning of retrograde, at some point, I got a blowjob. <laughs> and it was amazing. <laughs> and the next day, for whatever reason, we had a really shitty off day where like, it was it just a crap day. started with waking up. <laughs> yeah, so we had a In the case you don't day, know, it was me that gave it. So <laughs> like that sounded like some random person just gave him one. He's like, I don't know, I was walking around and it, it just happened. fell into a blowjob. But... Uh, <laughs> A great blowjob, following day, terrible day. So my incredibly, probably highly intelligent wife mm -hmm. decided that, oh, I guess there's no blowjobs during retrograde. This morning, from wake up, it was intense and it didn't stop. Yeah, but then we could just like, I'm like, well, I guess uh, vacuuming, we can't vacuum during retrograde or... It's okay, you don't. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> But it's so easy to just, well, yeah, I, I, um, uh, what's something that I do that I don't like doing? I don't know. I can't you, think you, of You stay away from things you don't like doing. <laughs> yeah. But it was funny. Just kidding. And the blowjob and the shitty day following had You think I don't do. like it? You no. just refer to that as like, I don't like, that's not it. I know that's not it. You just made that reference. It could be very much that. You could totally see a wife out there being like, sorry, I uh, can't do blowjobs during retrograde. Yeah, you can see some wives. Do You can see a lot of wives. You, you can't see your wife, though. No. I like you. <laughs> Anywho, retrograde and all the different forms and fashion that it comes in, you put a lot of stock in all of them. I, I believe all of them, mm -hmm. but the problem that I have is at certain point, we are in some energy cyclone retrograde issue concern uh cosmic wave of this that or the other every single fucking week yeah like it doesn't matter what's going on there's somebody that thinks that solar flares are coming off they of are saturn's eight what? moons and i don't and think can, that all, all of that stuff right we can always be in some form or fashion of energy panic that we need to not move and that's the part of me that's like, oh, well, let's just throw it all out because I don't need to live my life worrying about retrograde or uh, what seventh son from uh, the Unitarians or. <laughs> I just figured this all out. What is it? The fact that you're like, yeah, I believe this, but this is, we're done with it. We're going to throw all of this out. The reason that you're debunking this theory is because I decided no blue jobs during retrograde. So you're like, fuck that. Retrograde's out. It is not a thing. <laughs> Do well, not mess up my month. <laughs> what's the retrograde where blow jobs are in? Like The uh, rest of the time? What happens when Venus goes retrograde? Okay. Isn't Venus the planet of love you, or something You are like not that? a person that gets the birthday blow jobs. You get that whenever. So unless you want to go to the person who has to maybe get a present once a year and that's the only blowjobs you get, I suggest you be nice to me right now. I am. Or nice I will turn you. into one of those birthday blowjob wives. Don't you think that it gets to be a bit much though? Not the blowjobs, but the energy. <laughs> Message received. <laughs> the blowjobs never get to be a bit much. Um, but all the stuff that could be going on or is going on that you should be paying attention to or shouldn't be paying attention to and you have to take into consideration. And I, uh, we can't travel today because of do you know what i mean like doesn't it get just to be a bit much at some point i think it can be a bit much which is why i said no more no i was gonna be funny but i think we've said blowjob one too many times on this podcast we do have a fcc limit of 18 blowjobs oh that we, we get passed to say. that <laughs> we're in trouble let's see it's retrograde it gets to be a bit much though yes and i think you just have to keep it in context 
right? Sometimes life just is stressful and frustrating. Yes. Sometimes emotional things come back from your past to rear their ugly heads once again for you to learn from. Yes. And it has nothing to do with uh, the retrograde this or that or the other. True. But there are definitely. I was thinking about the uh, the moon. God. The yes. moon is totally a legit thing. Yes, so it's retrograde, but yes, I agree with all of these things. Not in the sense that it's up there in the sky. I didn't take it as that, I but a nice clarification. <laughs> no, like the effect that the full moon and, and the new moon and the new moon have on this planet. Yes, yeah, that's totally a thing. We saw that, like in easily tangible ways in our previous life. Yes, we did. You want me to keep talking about the moons now? No, that's okay. Where are we at? Where we at? I don't know. What's next? You come up with something now. <laughs> you were just... I'm trying to figure out when the guy's going to be done blowing his leaves. It's retrograde. That's the only <laughs> blowing he's getting. His wife heard the message. She's like, mm -mm. <laughs> He's like, fine. <laughs> Fuck you, then. I'll go play with my own blower. Oh, my God. Oh, you're funny. Oh, <sighs> I need another kid moment. Oh, now the dogs. If it's not the leaf blower, it's the dogs. We're never going to get our silence in. I'm really hyper. Me too. I'm like hyper and happy and... Me too. There's a lot of things that I'm willing to do during retrograde. I know. Like we're both very much in a horny mood where we're, we're having sex after this podcast. I was like, not in the moment. <laughs> Immediately after this podcast, we're having sex. So we're it's not even like... putting anything away. We're just going to... Go Keep it recording. It. No. What would it sound nope. like? Nope. That would be funny. Nope. Well, we could totally record nope. ourselves the audio of us nope, having nope, sex. Nope, nope, nope. Not for the podcast, just for our own enjoyment. I don't know. You think you're funny sometimes. I am funny. You are funny, but like, nope, not willing to risk it. I had another thing this week. Do you remember on... Was it? Uh, everything's going to have a sexual tone. I know. Undertone on this episode. I was going to ask if it was another apology. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, do you remember several episodes ago when I was talking about being around the guys that were talking about, that was all that toxic masculinity shit and how uncomfortable it was yes. and I didn't do the right thing necessarily. I had another one of those this week. Oh. I had to travel again this week and, um, this time I was legitimately, legitimately in a locker room. Yes. Like 100% actually in a locker room. And locker room talk actually took place. Wow. That's, and, I'm curious. Yeah. And it was, I, I participated with the locker room talk. Did you? Yeah. And it wasn't until, I don't remember, I think it was probably like close to immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um or me, I don't know. It wasn't that long after it actually happened that I'm like, God damn it, that just happened. Why did I just do that again? Uh, anywho, in a locker room, uh, setting up a float tank, somebody, I'm all done with it. It's the last day that I'm there. And somebody comes by and comments about how cool it is. And somebody else says, yeah, you totally need to get in there and relax. It'll help you relax. And somebody, and then the guy says something along the lines of, what I really need is a blowjob from a blonde. <laughs> Everybody laughs. And I'm like, you could take her in there too with you. Meaning into you the pod. That? Yes. And so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, right? I, um, it's funny because you said it. Like I'm so, you, you usually don't do that. So keep on I going. I know I don't usually do I that. Know, so. so I got like swept up in the moment. It's just one more example of how good guys, like, it just sucks. Like it's a fictional fucking blonde person that he referenced having. It, it's just stupid locker. I hate the terminology locker room talk. I absolutely hate it. It's just stupid conversation and talk that takes place between men oftentimes. And it shouldn't anymore. It just shouldn't. I'm, I guess it's my turn to play the devil's advocate here. Yeah. What's the harm in a guy wanting a blowjob from somebody he's attracted to? He's not saying, like, he's not degrading somebody else's wife and be like, yo, your mom's going to give me one. You know, not dumb stuff. He's just wanted, I don't see the harm in wanting, you I don't, I don't know the what the harm is. It's just, he just said he was being a sexual person wanting. Yeah, that's one way I to look at I, it. I don't see the harm. 
That's one way to look I'm, at it. The for only sure. harm I see is if he took her in there with like the abrasions. You do not <laughs> want to ever, ever, ever do anything like that in assaulting. Yeah, no blow jobs in a. Your skin may feel silky smooth while you're in there, but afterwards, if you, I, like, don't stroke it. <laughs> don't do any of that. <laughs> so you know my my mind, but no, what's the harm in it? So I'm he off the hook. I think you're off the hook, babe. Okay. I don't think there was anything wrong with that. I'm off the hook then. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I just pissed off every feminist out there, and maybe I'm a disgrace to women, but... I don't think any of those things just happened. A, yeah. Okay. It's okay, right? I think so. Yeah. I think it's okay to... Yeah. So do you want to talk about what else you wrote down, or should I go into my big shit that I want to talk about? I think we should go into your big shit, because the shit that I wrote down is not any way... Like, I don't even know how we could try to get to it from this conversation. That's okay. It won't go anywhere, right? It's it's on my phone. Cool. Unless you make me get a new one. Uh, recently, over the last several weeks, I have been processing a certain aspect of my personality slash characteristic slash just who I am. And I've been wanting to talk about it on the podcast for several weeks, but it's been difficult to do so. It's also been... Um, like the timing just hasn't been right. But to give you some context and you meaning uh, the person listening, <clears throat> I had a really good conversation with a good friend of mine and uh, his name's John. He's actually been on the podcast back in the day. Um, I don't remember what episode it was, but <clears throat> he was on the big episode that I did with a bunch of guys after an every man event and a uh, really good conversation with John where we had this really in-depth just back and forth conversation that was super deep about stuff. And through the process of that conversation, <clears throat> I kind of challenged him in a sense to tell me, like to, to criticize me in a way, but not in a douchebaggy, shitty way, just in an honest, like an honest assessment of things that he sees about me that I don't even remember how I phrased it, but essentially to give me some, constructive feedback, cons some constructive criticism about uh, maybe my personality or my actions or my behaviors. Awareness. Yeah, some awareness of it. And what he described, um, he referenced one thing specifically that stood out super loud, and then it helped me kind of build my own contextual understanding of what he was saying. But what he said was, oftentimes I ask questions that don't really have answers, that I'm not asking a question to actually hear what the other person is, what their, what their thoughts are or what their response or their answer to the question is. I just ask these really big rhetorical open-ended uh, questions that are designed for me to give my voice or my response or my thoughts. So it's not really about the other person or what they're thinking. Oh, big deep breath. And... When he said that, I'm like, oh, God, suddenly I had a flash of all the times that I do that, where I will pose a question or I'll ask a question, and it doesn't really mean that I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, I don't want to hear what your response is. I'm just simply posing the question so that I can tell you what I think. And that was like the tip of the iceberg for this thing. And to give it some context, some more context, um, there's a whole mode or, uh, not mode, modality, uh, type of therapy. What's another term, babe? I think modality is the best way to, okay. um, a approach. Yeah. There's technique. a whole technique, um, called, now I can't remember it. Family inter family ifs F, what is it is it like inter internal internal family systems yeah, i think that's what you said it was yeah uh anyways i don't know a ton about it but john is very schooled in it and i really like it uh at least what he's <laughs> educated me on but the general understanding i think i've talked about it on a way previous episode but essentially you all have we all have parts inside of us that are formed and created as we grow up and throughout our entire life. And this is identifying those kind of parts inside of us that have made us who we are today and looking at them, acknowledging them, 
um, communicating with them, like basically giving them the opportunity to be seen, to be heard, to be validated as legitimate parts inside of us. And it can, I mean, it's like, it's like everything, every part of us has a voice, every part of us has a thing. And so this conversation with him led me to really look at this part of myself from that perspective, look at it as a part of who I am uh, that was kind of came into existence back in the day when I was a kid and has been with me for a very long time, has served me in very many ways, shapes, and forms, and also both in good and bad situations. But what I did was I really started to look at it and I really started to sit with it. And I started to analyze, not analyze, but I started to really look at the way that I was speaking, first and foremost, like you, beautiful woman, uh, are so helpful because you're willing to like, let me correct myself when I, I, oftentimes you've been privy to this. Uh, I'll stop myself when I ask you a question that doesn't have an answer. (laughs) I'll stop myself and realize that, oh, I'm doing that thing. And what this thing has become in my mind and the reference that I use in regards to this part of me is this asshole. I refer to him as an asshole, not in a terribly mean sort of way, but just in the fact that he's kind of an asshole. And he's been an asshole since he came around, but he's served a purpose. And it's been so helpful to look at this part of myself to build a relationship with this part of myself and to also acknowledge like this is why he's here this is why he was here back in the day i don't need to completely get rid of him um all those kind of things i'm so fucking frustrated right now with that leaf blower but it's been nice and now i feel foolish talking about it I don't know what else to say about it. So ask me some questions, baby. First. First. Sit up straight. Okay. Um, I noticed your posture the entire... You were up. You were holding yourself. And then when you got deeper into it, when you were about... Yeah. I'll wait for you to come. He's getting closer. It's one over of, at the park. They'll be done soon. Oh, it's the big one. Yeah. And then comes the big vacuum truck. No, it's okay. Um... As soon as it got to where you were really getting into the detail, like the building up, you're okay. But when it came time to let it out, Mm -hmm. you dropped. Mm -hmm. That's when your posture went down. So that's why I just like, sit back up. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Next. Moving on. What else? Well, it's, it's, I guess it's, one thing I want you to do is just to sit there for a minute. So I'm, I know you want me to ask you questions, but I think you immediately want to distract out of it. And I say, don't do that. You should just sit in it for a minute. I know that's not what you want. It's not what I want. I don't know what I want in this moment. I don't know why I felt the need to talk about it. I don't know why I felt the need to bring it up on the podcast. Um, it feels like silly to do so. It means so much to me. It's so present in my life right now. This whole... Not just the concept and idea that I have all these different pieces and parts that I get to discover on a whole new level. It's not like I was oblivious to the fact that I was an asshole. I know that I'm an asshole at times. Um, it's something that I'm very like very well aware of. One of the things that was really unique in the uh, discovery of this was how much I present that first and foremost. Where that asshole oftentimes is what is meeting new people or going into new situations. And I don't like that. I don't like walking through life with that guy like in front of me to to protect me as I go into circumstances and situations and new experiences and meet new people. I don't like that because it's not truly who I am, even though it's a part of me. And I have said my entire life, I feel like I've... Do you remember I told you this story, baby? about way back when I was in high school and I made the girl cry because I referenced Jesus was a bastard. Mm -hmm. Like that was totally me playing devil. Like the devil's advocate part of me that comes out on this podcast is totally the fucking asshole. Mm -hmm. And that was the asshole back then in high school that 
group of kids sitting around a table talking about religion and this, that, and the other. And I made a comment how Jesus was a bastard, if we're just using the technical term of what a bastard is in the, fa- in the, in the sense that his parents were not married, because we're going off of the story of immaculate conception and all this kind of stuff. And this poor girl got up and left the table in tears and was heartbroken because I had insulted Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's an asshole. It's just plain and simple. And But for me, I'm like, no, I'm being, you know, I'm just looking at things objectively and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not. I'm just being a dick. And um, so my entire life, I've kind of moved through this space thinking that, like, I'm not a mean person. I'm not an asshole. If people really knew me, they would see that I'm kind and I'm generous and I'm loving and I'm all of these things that I really truly am. But oftentimes just this asshole is meeting people. So people only ever get to meet this asshole. And once I feel comfortable with people or in an, in an, in an environment, I will let that, uh, that, that facade down and I'll let some more parts of me come out, some more sides of me kind of be seen. Uh, but I don't like that. I don't need to move through life like that anymore. I don't want to move through life like that anymore. I want to present people the person inside that is loving, that is kind, that has a smiling face, that is like all accepting. That's the person that I want to introduce to people when they first meet me. That's the person that I want to be introduced to new experiences with, right? I want to go into new experiences with those eyes, not the eyes of the asshole that is like, hmm, let's see, who do I need to protect from? This environment is not safe. That person's a dick over there. I'm not going to talk to that person. Fuck you over there. And we'll sit here in our chair until, okay, I've got two hours left. I can be done, right? I don't want to go into experiences with those eyes anymore. I want to go in with, like, who can I meet? What's going on here? What can I experience? I'm... I want to meet everybody because I'm loving and I'm kind. And it's not just like, there's definitely a part of it. It's like, please validate that I'm worthy, right? Validate that I am, in fact, this loving, kind person. But it's also like, I'm not a mean person. I don't want people to view me that way. I also want to give people... I I know a ton. I don't know a ton, actually. (laughs) I wish I knew a ton. I wish more people were like this. I know a handful of people... Um, that I've met throughout my life that just have the absolute best energy. Like you just want to simply be in their presence. You want to be around them. You want to be in their company as often and as frequently and for as long as possible because they just feel so good. I want to be one of those type of people. I want to be that type of person that gives that feeling to other people because it feels awesome and I think it would feel awesome to be that person <laughs> to in some like energetic way receive that 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 exchange with people. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that's probably more of who I am. I'm probably more of that warm, loving, kind, generous person than probably any other part of myself. It's just I've never let that part fully out. I need you to talk now beautiful wife of mine so he says it has a part to do with uh validation being validated Mm -hmm. you know how you say when you say negative things about you or about somebody else it's about you and when you say positive things about somebody else it's also about you because you can recognize the things in others that you see in yourself okay you're like where is she going with this um so you you see the parts of you that um, come across as an asshole, and you acknowledge that there is parts of you that is not that, right? You remember the parts that you're an asshole. So those parts stick out. You see, you see that guy. You remember stories from high school. You remember stories from elementary school. You remember stories from last week. You see. You see him. That's the validation. You see him. You acknowledge it nice, um, feeling good energy, compassionate, non-asshole. Put your phone down while I'm talking to you, mister. It was Stevie. Go ahead. I understand. I just wanted to be present, so I was waiting. 
You acknowledge mm-hmm. that that guy's there, that he is also you, but you don't really see him. He doesn't get the validation. So the part that comes out is just the part that you validate the part of you that you see, that you remember, which is, I did this horrible thing. I did this horrible thing. I did this horrible thing. Cause that's how you see it is this horrible thing. I was being a jerk. Um, let's, let's take a high school story. Met a girl, um, that had a conversation with you and she had an opportunity to tell you, thank you. And how much something meant to her that happened in high school. You were sitting right there. It's okay. I'm not surprised you don't remember it. This feeds into my point, by the way. Um, she talked about how she, I don't remember the exact of her part of the story. A window got broke. I don't remember if it was her car or her house window, but she was panicking. A window got broke. She was going to be in so much trouble. It cost this much to fix it. She was like, her parents were going to kill her, you know, because that's what kids always think. You know, my parents are going to kill me. This is where I die. Um, and you took her to your house, went and grabbed money to pay for it and gave it to her. And that was it. She couldn't pay it back. She didn't pay it back. You didn't expect her to pay it back. You were just like, it's going to be okay. And you gave her the money to pay for it. And then years, 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 years later, she's like, oh my gosh, you have no idea how much that meant to me. I remember this. So she tells you the story of where you're the hero. That's also another, go back to that one later. You come in and you were just compassionate for no reason, no expectations, but you don't, you don't see that guy. So he's there a lot. When does he get the attention? I'm trying to remember who that girl is now. (laughs) I remember that. Can I say her name? Oh, yeah. 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 Holly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I remember that. See, you don't acknowledge the good. You only see the making the girl cry. You only see the part of you that thinks you're an asshole in a locker room. You see that so clear. But you've got to give yourself the validation of... I totally see what you're saying, baby. Of course. I see the point that you're making. That it's not, I mean, the fact is if we, if I'm, if I'm meeting, you know, if, if I, if I'm meeting everything with the asshole first and foremost. That you are aware of. Right. I've watched you. Then that makes. That's not true. It's that's not true, story. right? It yes. is my story. And, but it makes sense that that's all that I would see because he's probably what I see in the mirror when I, do you know what I mean? When I look in the mirror, he's probably, uh, yeah, that makes total sense. And the other guys. Right, because there's multiple parts of me, but the other parts of me, especially that part that is like the sweet, loving, generous, kind, um, I'm not looking through his eyes very often. So it would make sense that I don't really see the ways that he encounters the world a lot or, yeah, I don't know. More than you have any idea of. That's my point. I see him come out. The majority of the time. Mm. And that does not make sense to you. That doesn't make sense to me at all. I, I want to say the minority. I say maybe a handful of times you've seen that guy come out. But the majority of the time, that the doesn't make sense. The majority of the time. No, it doesn't because you don't see it. So to you, it's like very false. And, oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Or I'm just seeing use this. No, I see him so much. Don't think that I don't see the asshole. I mean, there's times I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I see him. And then there's times that it's just like, I, I see him. But the majority of the time... That is not how you come out. You do come out, especially in moments where it, um, you feel like a need to either shift the attention, like as a protection, whether it's from you or somebody else, you'll kind of pop something up because then it diverts the attention away. So it's not always a, um, make it about me validation. Sometimes it's like you're throwing yourself on the grenade in a tense situation. You'll pull that up too, which in a way is also very compassionate. So I'm not saying I'm not validating your asshole. I love to say that. I'm just saying like this deserves some awareness too. I'll be doing the asshole validating. (laughs) It's it's the full picture, right? You're just looking at part of it. And this is such a big part. I'm not saying change anything, take any validation away. I'm just saying, oh, it's like your exercise to expand your your vision. That's all. It's so hard. Um, so this has been several weeks that I've been processing and looking through life kind of with this context of thinking about this asshole and seeing the ways that he pops up and being grateful for him. And I mean, mm-hmm. it's been a few weeks and part of what I want to continue to do 
is look for other parts of me in the way, in the same way, shape and form that I've done with this asshole. And I haven't part of it. I mean, yes, there's always excuses of life's busy and blah, blah, blah. And that's true. I mean, it's been a little hectic and busy. Um, but it's not like I don't have copious amounts of downtime, right? And so I want to look for and search out and discover and build a relationship with these other parts of me so that I can communicate with them, that I can hear them, I can hear their voice, I can hear their thoughts, their experiences, why they're here, all these kind of different things. But I haven't done it. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's like, originally it was like, well, I want to give the asshole his due time, right? Mm -hmm. And now it kind of feels like he's had his time. But Mm -hmm. why am I, why am I hesitant to move on to the next portion or to the next piece? What, what, what is, uh, what's that? What's that? Steph? That's my Stephanie. (laughs) What do you think that is? Um, first things that jump out is maybe... I'm going to murder the leaf blower. Okay. I'm going to get my rifle that I don't have and go to the roof of our house. Okay, enough. Go ahead. <laughs> you can say that when it's not recorded. <laughs> first thing that comes out. Is that you don't know where to look. Mm. And then... Mm. And then a, a close second is... Do you deserve it? Hmm. <sighs> it's so funny, those two questions that you pose. It feels like the asshole is responding to both of them. It feels like I can sit with them for just a split second before he wants to respond. So like... You don't know where to look for them. Fuck off. I do know where to look for them. I see them all the time. I know where they're at. I don't need you to fucking... So that's the first response. And then, do I deserve it? That one's a little bit harder. The asshole is like, fuck yeah, you deserve it. And then it's like, well, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't deserve it. And then it's like, what? My brain's hurting, babe. This is so... I don't know if I can do this right now. Maybe that's why I haven't done it. Maybe it's just not time. Then that feels like an excuse. Like there's definitely a part of me that is lazy. Right? What would what would the lazy guy say? The lazy guy said, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. We got tomorrow. We got the next day. That's a part of me too. Like what what is his purpose? Right? I think all the purposes of all these pieces and parts are there for one specific fucking reason, right? It's yes, to con- what is that? It's just to protect and drive the train forward. Agreed. That's all. It's just to keep the fucking train on the tracks going in the direction. It's just to protect. That's it. That's their sole purpose. They're protect. just protecting the, the organism that they're riding on. Right? That's it. So the fuck, yeah, you know where to look. You look out all the time. You see them. That's protection. That's protection. The lazy guy's protection. Yeah. The... The happy, giddy, loving, kind guides there is protection. And then it's like, I believe what I'm saying in regards to all of these pieces and parts just simply there is protection to protect the, the, to protect me as I proceed through life. Then the very next fucking question that pops into my head is, well, then who am I? Who are they protecting? Like, what is the part that is just Craig? And then it's like, well, they all are, they all are me. I'm a conglomeration of all of these parts. There is not a singular piece of me that is separate from all of them. They're all intertwined and connected and they're protecting themselves. It's a self-preservation of the asshole, of the lazy one, of the loving one, of this, like, they're all just pieces and parts that are protecting their own hides (laughs) hides <laughs> what if that's not it what if that what if that's not it what if it's yes you're a conglomeration of everything they're all working together and you're gone you're hello asshole i'm talking to you too <laughs> but you're not the, talking to your asshole mom i love that oh my god it's so fun <laughs> what if they're not protecting themselves okay what if it's team craig what if it's they're all protecting each other yeah i get that 
I agree. I think that's what they're doing. It just sucks because there's like, it seems to me like there should be one of them that they're protecting. That would be boring. Do you know what I mean? Like, I totally agree with you. I think they all, they're just protecting each other. Like that makes so much more sense to me. But it's like, well, who's in the middle? Who's the one that they're protecting? Right? The team has come together for what purpose? To to drive this train forward and protect this one person. I'm sorry. What happened? Um, you should probably not. Uh, you very much disconnected from that. You like, poof. like you, you kicked me out the door. <laughs> you're done with me. You totally. Your yeah, posture's back up. You went down. You kicked me out, and it was very like apparent. You and I are so energetically connected. Yeah. So, folks that are listening, this can happen when you fall in love with somebody. <laughs> And truly commit yourself to the practice and the pro- in the process of being, uh, what are we? We're like. We're Craig and Steph. We're two, pizza, p- two pizzas in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> but we can fill each other so subtly that you're right. I did just disconnect. Mm-hmm. But then I think, well, why? Why did I disconnect? It's like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm very fucking uncomfortable. <sighs> This is so loud for me right now. So the last handful of episodes that we've done, I have not really been willing to sit and talk about me or my stuff. Or uh, I'm so comfortable in the space of talking about you, Stephanie. So comfortable in this space of like giving you the the platform and the space and the opportunity and the microphone to speak into about your life and your experiences and your things. I am so uncomfortable right now sitting in this space of trying to even remotely talk about myself or my shit. Or I don't even feel like this is shit. I just feel like this is me trying to talk about myself. And I'm like, that's so dumb. I don't want to talk about myself. Nobody wants to listen to me talk about myself. Who's Craig? I'm going to talk about who I am. I don't fucking care. Nobody wants to listen to that. Like as soon as I started this conversation, as soon as I started talking about these pieces and these parts of me, in my brain, I'm like, this is the dumbest fucking podcast ever. Why the fuck are we doing this? We just need to scrap this entire fucking episode. I got the leaf blower in my fucking left ear. It's driving me fucking bonkers. This is so dumb. Stop talking. Finish all of this immediately. Let's change topics. This was pointless. And now I feel so fucking heavy. Now I have that like uncomfortable energy in my body where I like want to push the microphone away, push stop, we're done. Sorry, baby, we'll record later tonight perhaps. So I can relate with you so much because I know you've had similar experiences in the last couple of weeks with the last few episodes that we've done and things like that. So I get it completely. But I don't like the way it feels. It feels very silly to sit here and talk about myself, babe. I don't know why people would, I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like there's any value to this. I don't feel like there's any point to this. I don't feel like I'm giving anybody anything other than just dumb shit in my fucking head, right? There's not a lesson to be learned here. There's no, uh, there's nothing here for people to glean from other than me sitting in uncomfortable shit that I don't want to talk about. And what is that uncomfortable shit? Me. I don't want to talk about me. What What the fuck do you want to know? Right? I don't care. What do you want to know? This hurts my heart. I can feel anxiety. I can feel tension. I'm sad. It makes me sad that I don't want to talk about myself. Because I can feel how much this is coming up. I can feel how uncomfortable this is, and it makes me sad that it's this uncomfortable to just simply talk about myself. Hmm. (laughs) I feel like I'm battling the asshole. Because he very much wants to just come in and say, it's okay. And then, like, put up this big shield. The asshole is very much that, uh, 
devil's advocate. Likes to push and poke and prod. Because it's fun, but it's also distancing from me. If I can keep the conversation swimming around all these other crazy thoughts and ideas, and I don't have to really talk about me. Hmm. You know when you start to get like emotion that wants to come out and you don't let it and you fight it and it starts to hurt physically in your body. You know that feeling, right? You expressed that yesterday. I can feel it in my chest. <clears throat> I can feel it up in my head. It feels like pressure. Building. And I can hear my words, all the words that I use of like, uh, just feel it. You can just feel it. You don't need to hold it in. It's okay to just feel it. And then I'm like, but there's not really a point. And why am I feeling it unless I can connect it to something so that I have context for it. And then I hear my words like, that's not needed. You can just feel it. And then my asshole just wants to be like, <laughs> oh, and I'm tired. This is exhausting. It's exhausting to try to hold this emotion in. My shoulders are heavy now and I just want to slump down on this stool. And I really, really just kind of want to be done. This is a stupid fucking podcast. We should not do podcasts anymore. Because before the podcast, we were going to have amazing, great sex. And then we're like, oh, we got to record a podcast, dumb idiot husband. And now I'm like, well, fuck, it's going to be hours before we get to the great sex part. Because now I have to process this feeling and you're going to make me keep processing this feeling. And I don't even know what the fucking feeling is. That's the thing. I don't even know what the fucking feeling is other than I'm uncomfortable right now. I feel uncomfortable. So just sit with that? Yeah, fuck off. Like, I don't want to sit with this uncomfortable feeling. It's very much a fight feeling right now. Yeah. Right? But is it fight or is it really freeze? No, I feel fucking fight. Like right now I'm like, I'll just go tell the leaf blower guy, hey, would you mind stop leaf blowing? Ooh, that was a lot of fight right there. And then he'll say, no, I got to feel And then I'll just punch him. Okay, there it is. Right? It's okay. You can feel it. Guess what? What? I love you. I know you do. I can feel it up in my back and like like my skin is starting to itch in like weird places at the base of my neck. I keep holding my breath. I can feel myself sucking in. I don't know what this is. I don't feel like there is anything of value here to try to express and feel on this podcast episode that sucks. Um, so I want to like contextualize everything so then it makes sense. I'll be like, look, folks, this is what happens when emotion comes up in our bodies and we can feel it physically and it's good to connect with your physical body and I feel him flush. Can you see my flushedness? Like I feel like I'm getting warm. Do my cheeks look rosy? You're very rosy. Yeah. Fixes in the field. Somebody says that. Somebody says that. Somebody says you don't have to try and figure it out. When you're trying to figure it out. You're you're out of it. You're in your head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that asshole is. Yeah. I I'm may love him. Very much in my head right now. It's okay. I'm trying to figure it out. Practice. I'm trying to go back to the beginning of this conversation and why this would invoke so much uncomfortable feeling for me. And the, the point that it got super uncomfortable was the realization of how, how much I don't like talking about myself. And that seems wrong. Like, oh, excuse me. 
it's I, it's not that I don't think I I like talking about myself, babe, but uh, maybe just stuff I like. Right? Maybe just good stuff. I don't know if I like talking about the good stuff. At this point, I don't know anything. I don't know anything right now. Everything's like unknown. Help me. Please. Don't just encourage me to go into my fucking feelings right now. Okay. I feel like... Help you disconnect? No, help don't help me dis... No, no, no. Because, uh, yes, I know that that's all I need to do in this moment, but... Just feel your feelings. Yeah, it seems so fucking pointless to now have four minutes or something of silence as I sit here and fucking cry. That seems so pointless. Is that true? No, I know it's not true. Okay. But I, I don't want to do that right now. That's okay too. It doesn't seem like it's going to serve anything to do that right now. Is that true? I'm so fucking mad at that fucking leaf blower. I know. He's become the fucking focal point of all my fucking rage. Yep. Like we can drive the van through the park and just run him over. Yep. Well, we're not going to do that, listeners. I could. You could. Well, tackle your ass. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm proud of you. For, I know. For what? Because you're still here. Doing nothing? That's not true. What it feels like I've done is I've talked about myself in a very pointless way to express things that have no purpose or point. And now I'm complaining about not liking talking about myself, and it's uncomfortable. I believe that is how you are feeling, yes. That's what that it feels like. That is 100% true. That it's is like, this feeling. is dumb. What's the point of this? We've just wasted 30 plus minutes of this for what reason? Nothing. Nothing. No reason at all. Like, what's the, what's the takeaway? Right? Craig has a ton of shit that he has to talk about or feel. He's got the ton of shit that he's got to feel. Right? Lots of pieces of me that I need to connect with. Fuck. Ooh. Mm. That's the point. Lots of pieces of me that I need to connect with. That I haven't fully. That need to be heard. That need to be seen. So you know that little part of me that I think is like sunshine then is bright and loving and kind and warm and wants to meet people? Yeah. That little part of me is like a little boy. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's just like, hi, we're playing. Like people come to the door and it's like a puppy like, who's here? What's going on? Like that's what that part feels like. Where everything is an adventure. Everything's fun. There's no... Nothing scary. Even scary things aren't scary because they're not really scary. They're just unknowns. Like that little part of me, that 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 piece of me. <sighs> Deserves to come out and play. Really, really, really likes. Likes himself, likes the world. Like he's so peaceful because everything is so easy because everything is just simple. It's just fun. There's nothing to stress about. It's just, ah. I like that part of me. Maybe that's the next part that I should look at. Maybe that's the next part. What should we call it? Mm. Ooh, the kid. Okay. <sighs> so yeah, that'll be the next part that I look at and do some work on the kid. Because I can feel him. I can see him. I know he's there. I know he's got... He's got a lot to say. I want to talk to the kid. I want to hear what the kid thinks. So, we're going to wrap up here. 
because I have to go murder a leaf blower. And um, <coughs> one of the things that I had originally planned on doing when I started talking about this, uh, I wrote t- to the asshole. I wrote him a letter, and I also wrote a letter from his perspective. And I was going to read those. I'm not going to, because I don't fucking want to. <laughs> Says the asshole. <laughs> But uh, it's a good way for me to connect with those parts and really... Because when I was writing the letter as the asshole, I felt like I was him. And then when I was writing the letter to the asshole, it felt like it was me. So it was a really good way to step into those spaces. So I'm excited because I'm going to do the same thing in some way, shape, or form with the kid. Write to the kid and talk to him and learn about him. I feel like I probably don't know a whole lot about him now that I sit here and think about it. So I'm curious to see what he's going to write. The kid, I think, is the reason why I like frogs. I don't really like frogs. But I'm like, because I'm looking at a frog in our home, well, multiple fucking frogs in our room. And I'm like, yeah, what? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, oh, yeah, the kid likes frogs. Okay. Baby, I love you. I love you. What should we do now? Should we be done? We can be done. Okay. Sexy time? Probably not yet. (laughs) But yes. Okay. I love you. I'm going to hold you. Yeah. Well, (laughs) you might think you're going to hold me, but we'll see. I'm holding you right now. You might have to tackle me. Um, I love you. I love you. How should we wrap up? Should we just wrap up? Just wrap up. Wrap up. I'm a good present wrapper. Yes, you are. If you want to send me your presents, I'll wrap up for Christmas. <laughs> I love you, Steph. I love you, Craig. Hey, your mama. Your bitch. mama was a leaf blower, <laughs> and he's been an asshole since he came around. But he's served a purpose. I'm just simply posing the question so that I can tell you what I think. For those of you that don't know what retrograde is, it's an imaginary thing that people... It's an imaginary (laughs) thing. I was going to describe it as a dry ass fuck, so you go ahead. (laughs)